Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This one is going to be a little bit different. It's based on a request from one of my subscribers. He asked me, how do you do body distortions in your animation and work them in with the motion? Make the animation look larger than life and very crazy and a bit further from the reality. So, um, well, there's no proper way of doing it, but how to warp your figures, particularly the human body in becoming more exaggerated and having more kind of freedom with it, you know, um, not just having it as these, uh, like your, your arm as these blocks that can never change their dimensions at all, but actually have the dimensions change over a set amount of frames. And actually when you decide to start exploring this, it opens up a lot of possibilities that weren't available before when you weren't trying this method. The people I admire, uh, what they do in almost every frame. So um, I would say do some research, look for some of the animators that you aspire to be like. For myself, I think that um, probably one of the best examples of someone who's able to manipulate characters in a very stylistic way is Shinya Ohira. So he worked on Kill Bill, he worked on, on Akira, uh, he's been in some Miyazaki films and certain selective um, scenes which I was really impressed with. He was in Animatrix as well which is an amazing uh, film. I would advise you check him out because he can do this method a lot better than I can but I have this scene lined up and this is I think perhaps a good example of where I've been able to manipulate characters to completely break their proportions at times and I've actually been pushing for it more so uh, you have to want to do this in order to get it you know it's not something that happens by accident and when it does when you do do it by accident it usually doesn't look good so when proportions are broken in the characters and it looks good that's because the animator is able to keep the characters on model if he or she wants but chooses to break the proportions so that's the big difference there so if you aren't able to draw the character normally and get it looking fairly okay then you have to learn that first so you have to learn to be able to do the character proportions fairly well I mean I'm no expert on proportions in fact it's my weakest thing so you know you, you don't have to be a master of proportions to be able to do this method but I am saying it doesn't hurt to be able to draw a character properly from head to toe first before you do this so I got this scene here and these are these kind of shadow creatures and so that's where I am right now with this so he blocks the thing and then comes round and then the other one swoops in the camera kind of turns around to be in front of him here and then and then they do these little poses which I think are quite cool so I just I thought right now it's like this one's high this one's low so he comes in low and then he comes up and then this one go, ducks down low and the dynamics just look uh, kind of better that way, I guess. Um, but anyway, so that's what I've got for this scene. They're like shifting, morphing shadow creatures. I thought they'd have these big scary mouths as well with loads of teeth that occasionally come out. Um, I don't know. <laughs> kind of inspired by um, things like Venom and um, the spirits in Spirited Away. That's just naming a few. But anyway, because I want to demonstrate how you can also start to start to introduce this these uh, morphing ideas into your own work. So one tool that I use a lot for this is the distort tool. Uh, I think that's what it's called. It's you find it by modify, transform, distort, or you can press W on your keyboard, or you might have have that set to a different thing if you've reprogrammed the functions. You'll see this foot really comes out at you here and then it goes straight back in, maybe you have a little bit of uh, distortion there. That's a bit too much, like that. You'll also notice that, uh, you see how, how here I've kind of pushed the properties of the leg. So the lower leg, right, you've got the calf muscle which is here, and this one it really comes out, you know, it bends out more than it would normally. You know, normally it would just kind of be like, probably like that at the most if you've got a well-defined calf muscle or if you don't have a well-defined calf muscle it would be even less than that and you know if you're wearing a shoe it would look something like that I'm not a I'm not a great anatomy expert as I've already said but yeah 
So what I've done here is I've pushed it more. So I've observed what the normal properties are and then I've exaggerated it. So this is very, very concave here. And then it kind of becomes part of the foot because I just like that look. That's like one of the looks that I go for, but yours might be different, you know? So anyway, back to this. I'll use the distort tool here to bring this um, hand much closer to the camera and this way I can sort of distort it a little bit more kind of force the perspective so I've just gone to distort there and bring it you see stretch it right out you see how that feels like it's coming out of the screen at you it's a really nice way to add a bit of depth as well so you see how it kind of flicks out it's just for one frame there and I'm just gonna modify this so and then here I'm just gonna add in that's a little bit tricky because you can't see the hand in front of the silhouette but you'll see I've done this trail already I'm gonna bite into the figure a little bit Let's see if that makes any difference yeah and I'm just gonna improve the fingers on this one I think that pinky wouldn't be there it would be Trying to get that nice, well-defined thumb shape. I really like using silhouettes for this because it means you have to make sure that things are very easy to communicate uh, to your audience. The silhouette shape is everything, but it sometimes creates a problem because you have to make it work in a silhouette form. So you might not want to do things like over the head shots and stuff like that. But anyway, that's for a different tutorial. I'm actually going to add a little bit of motion blur on these fingers here. Just same technique again. Uh, they probably have a slightly different angle to the wrist. Maybe something like that. And then just erase the ones that are too far forward. I'd say maybe don't use this technique unless you want your stuff to all look exactly like mine. I mean, this is just one way that I do it, but really you should look for your own way to do it. I have a lot of time here. I'll just do it really quick. Now, one other thing I want to do, and you might be thinking, where are the legs in this part? Well, I'm, I'm going to draw them in later. So one thing I want to talk about is um, distributing mass to different parts of the body. So you'll see that things like the head and stuff, they're changing uh, their size a lot. And you can actually use this to your advantage. It goes all this mass more mass goes to the top of the body here and then loads of it goes to the top of the body as he raises his arms up so they come out of his legs here I could even exaggerate that more here if you wanna here, there we are I'm actually gonna drag that leg behind a little bit like that his leg just kinda of slides in and then look his legs are really small but then his upper body is huge and then it kind of goes all the way up to his head after that so now the mass goes out of his arms again once his arms come down a little bit and back to his to his head there so I'm gonna make his head even bigger and then I'll just go and draw another recovery shot or follow through as you might want to call it cross like this now it's gonna come back this way it's gonna circle back because he just has kind of thrown his arm out see where the head was going okay all right so let's let's bring that let's make that head small now and we're not going to worry about proportions right now because we can change them anytime I'm going to bring that oh, that leg out a little bit like that and with sil silhouettes you don't have to worry about the lines so much because it's just a shape bring this see about bringing this foot up do my little motion blur here maybe I'll just just put it in like that. Kind of switch positions there. You're gonna to want to make use of your skews every now and then. And like where that hand is there. The more crazy you can make it, generally the better. Let's try with this one now. So you see how this one I drew this pose here and then I just kept it going. So I noticed that his arm was coming down here and his head was going up in this roaring motion. And I just kept going and see how far I can push it. See there, I've pushed it really quite to its limits, I guess. I wonder what we can do for that now. Maybe 
bring the waist in. I think I pushed that pose to like its very limit there, which is kind of what you want, I think, when doing this. Obviously, when uh, doing like a more normal character, not as wacky or anything like that, you might want to tone it back a little bit after you've exaggerated it. You know, you're going to have to find that balance. A lot of experimenting going on in this one. Anyway, I'll get back to that pose. Let's see where else I can use it. So what I've started to do with this character is introduce a little particle system where when he moves fast and he like throws his arms up or down like that, little particle trail gets left behind. So I'm gonna start introducing that in like every part so it gives him more of a, a look like he's not made of physical matter and that he's more like just energy. But yeah, um, where can I exaggerate something? Maybe with the kick, right? So I got the kick. Just bring that leg out. He's got plenty of room there, so he can just, just bring that out to there. See how that really whips out now? It's like a, it's like a whip. It just snaps out. All right, so not much of a tutorial, I guess, but I hope you learned something during this. I wanted to just give this quick demonstration and show how I was doing this kind of work. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Until then, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Please leave me a comment of whatever you'd like to see. I really love getting feedback from you guys and, and seeing uh, what you want me to cover next. It's a very good indicator for me to understand my audience you know also check out my website if you haven't already animatorguild.com sign up for my mailing list you'll be sent a link to loads of exclusive tutorials which you can't find on youtube uh, i give away some of my best secrets in those episodes and they're they're much more lengthy more detailed i don't speed things up as much and stuff so anyway animatorguild.com go check it out um i'll see you next time goodbye